Uh, after changing my camera cable and antenna, I get very bad range for my Caddx Vista. At around 300 meters, I have only one video bar. Um, I'd like to say, Mark FPV, I don't think the camera cable can cause bad range. Now, I say that, and I've heard of people claiming that that was the case, and I don't see how that could be. I want to acknowledge that people have said that, and maybe it's possible, but like the camera cable gets the image into the video transmitter, and then the video transmitter transmits out into the air, and it doesn't make sense to me that a bad signal from the camera cable could cause low RSSI. But you also change with the UFL to SMA adapter, and I have to tell you, many UFL to SMA adapters have horrible performance, like terrible attenuation with cheap, shitty, bad coaxial cable. My guess is that it's that UFL to SMA adapter that's your problem. Um, so what should you do? Well, just buy more and try other ones. That is an option. You could do that. If you were to get something like the, and not everybody's going to be able to buy one of these because they're often out of stock. But if you were to buy something like the Immersion RC RF power meter, holy cow, it is in stock right now. You could buy it right now. Um, you could test your cable with the Immersion RC RF power meter and see how much power is coming through the cable. And that would give you a sense of whether the cable was performing good or bad. And you could actually test multiple cables to see which one passed the most power. This is a, yeah, this is a very- that one hard, huh? It used to be like a hundred bucks. Right? I think it was like 80. Yeah. Yeah. Still, I mean, it's a, it's a very, oh, here you can pay. Oh, that's uh that's in Australia. Everything's more expensive there. Um, yeah. So out of stock. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a pretty valuable tool. I would say, um, I would also have you uh, check this out. This is the Tiny Spectrum Analyzer, the Tiny SA. It is not a power meter. It's more than a power meter. And it is similar in price. It's about 200 bucks. And I think it may be about as accurate as the uh, RF power meter. Maybe not. I don't know. The RF power meter is not like super accurate but it's plenty accurate for a $150 thing. Um, but if I was going to spend $150 on the power meter, I would think hard about spending $200 on the Tiny SA. You can see I actually purchased it. I have one of these. Um, because it can do power readings, but it can do a lot more. Ooh, with a 25-watt attenuator. Yeah, if you're going to do power readings, maybe you should consider buying a 25-watt attenuator. Um, and, uh, it's not going to be, it's going to have more of a learning curve, but it's going to be a much more versatile tool and, uh, is well, well worth looking into. Okay. Hey, uh, yeah. as a side note, the only reason I know of that the camera cable can cause issues mm -hmm. is because the, you do not need all the pins to get the video signal into the, from the camera into the VTX. So what can happen is you have less than the right amount of pins, and for some reason it lowers the megabit. So it doesn't lower the signal. Hmm. It lowers the megabit of the connection for some reason. And I don't know why oh, that that's is, interesting. but I've seen it happen on my own Vista. I've seen like 12 before, and the uh, cable needed to be replaced. That's interesting. So Bad for Life says, don't use bars to read video signal, use MBPS. But uh, not to call you out, Bad for Life, but I think, Blunty, what you're saying is that there's a reason to look at both the megabits per second and the signal strength. Because you could have a situation where you have good signal strength but low bits per second because your camera cable's messed up. Or you could have a, sec uh, a situation where you have... Well, you couldn't have good bits per second and low signal strength because, like, you need the signal strength to get the data through. But if you have low megabits per second and low RSSI, that's a different situation from if you have high RSSI and low MBPS. That's fascinating. I lost my quad this weekend. I lost video abruptly in a high power loop and tried to fly blind back, but reception ended up in the forest somewhere. What should I have done differently? Disarm and drop? Man, that's a tough one. Like the first question I would have is why did you lose video? Did you lose video because you were flying too close to the edge of your range? Did you lose video because your video transmitter lost power? I would try, if possible, to post-mortem why I lost video, because that, of course, is the primary problem here. 
Um, and then I would try to think about what I would do in the future to not lose video. As far as whether to disarm or fly back, ah, pff, that's a judgment call. I can't make that judgment call. I wasn't there. Um, if I was in the middle of a power loop and lost video, I feel like my chances of getting it upright again are basically zero. I feel like I would disarm. If I was flying straight forward, like if you're in the middle of a power loop and you lose video, maybe there's a chance you could quickly flip it into angle mode and like hover it line of sight and try it fly back line of sight. But flying it back blind, not going to happen. Really unlikely. Maybe if you could get it to climb, you could get video back. Um, so like, but, but what are the chances that you're going to lose video and then realize you lost video and go, oh shit, what do I do? And then boom, get it into angle mode and climb out before you've crashed. Like a power loop doesn't leave you a lot of freaking room to recover. So I don't, I don't think you really had a chance. Also, if you don't use, uh, angle mode that much on your drone it's very possible you have an excel that goes out of like sync when you're three minutes into the flight or five minutes into the flight and you flip to angle mm -hmm. and you just fly straight towards the ground anyway so. yeah yeah so um i would probably disarm if i lost video in the middle of a power loop and then you need to find the drone so you would want a self-powered beeper on the drone so that if you eject the battery the drone will still go beep 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 beep, beep and you'll be able to find it Grinning Golems asks, how do you disable air mode in beta flight? Um, what you do, let me go back to beta flight here. What you do is you go to the configuration tab, you turn off permanently enable air mode. Okay. When you do that, then in the modes tab, there will be an air mode mode. The air mode mode disappears if air mode is permanently enabled. In the air mode mode will allow you to turn air mode on and off. And by default, the air mode mode isn't enabled at all. So air mode is off permanently. That's how you do it. Peter Jacob. Thank you for 20 euros. I had a bad crash when I attached my GoPro to my Nazgul DC-5 when the quad was flying midair. Three of the prop ends blew off, and now I'm worried this might happen again. Why did this happen? The Peter Jacob, the number one cause of a, like a prop that spontaneously explodes is you over-tighten the prop nut. The prop nut needs to be tight enough that the prop cannot spin against the motor bell but not much tighter than that. If you over-tighten it, then it can explode. But the hub will explode. The, 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 the blades won't fly off. Did you use Loctite on the nuts? That's a good question. Loctite will disintegrate the plastic. Don't use Loctite. Yeah. 